This is a brief discussion on the history of chemistry and specifically how alchemy influenced chemistry. So chemistry is important to uh, science in general because it's uh, related to many other the other science fields. For example, chemistry is a huge part of biology class. Um, there's definitely connections with chemistry and physics and geology and other earth science classes. So knowing chemistry is important for those fields of study as well. Chemistry came from alchemy, um, which was a precursor to chemistry. Uh, the big thing that was different between alchemy and chemistry, though, is that alchemy didn't follow the scientific method. It was lacking the cause and effect relationship between uh, changing a variable and how that caused an outcome. So um, because of that, alchemy was often considered a pseudoscience, mixing um, some different parts of everyday life like religion, art, philosophy, medicine, astrology. And because of that, uh, people who practiced alchemy would be more similar to like a wizard than they would be to how we would think of science, like mixing potions, trying to solve problems that way. A little bit more haphazard. Now, um, if chem alchemy, excuse me, was a pseudoscience, why even try it? So some of that depended on where these people lived and what their overall intentions were, was largely influenced by where they lived. A um, couple basic reasons to do alchemy. One was to find something called the Philosopher's Stone, which was uh, material which should have helped also then create uh, transmuted metals, which is taking a cheap metal like lead and turning it into a more valuable prize metal like gold or silver. So that was a huge goal of the alchemists in early times. And then another goal of alchemists was to find the elixir of life, which would be like the fountain of youth, you know, endless life type of concept. And the philosopher's stone was supposed to help with both of those. Um, and then, like we said, it's influenced by culture. So if you are a culture that's being ravished by a plague or something like that, finding the elixir of life would be very important. Or if you're impoverished, finding the philosopher's stone um, in order to transmute metals would also be important. Um, however, there were some people that were just trying to seek knowledge, but just missing that scientific uh, method structure to establish cause and effect. So the different contributions of science, there's a couple things that we still use that we like to mention. Uh, chemical symbols, uh, not necessarily the same symbols that alchemists use, but definitely the use of symbols. When we talk about elements, we have symbols for all those elements. Alchemists need those because at the time, uh, in many cultures, alchemists were kind of outcasts and, and they needed to have a secret practice of their alchemy, so they use symbols to try to communicate with other alchemists. Uh, some alchemists did discover a few elements, so we can thank alchemists for some of the elements that we have today, and also some lab devices. Uh, here's a chart showing some of the symbols used. For example, this moon was for silver. This symbol down here is to represent tin, um, and copper is right here. So. Uh, symbology was used to represent elements. And then um, lab devices, when the scientists, alchemists, were trying to uh, find the elixir of life or transmute metals, they needed labware. And we have similar labware still that those alchemists developed. And then alchemy was practiced all over the world. And depending on where you are in the world, they're known for finding different um, materials that we still know about today. So for example, China, gunpowder, fireworks, you probably have heard about fireworks coming from China. Medicines from a couple different places. Um, you can think of Egyptian culture and papyrus and how that uh, came came to play with um, recording the first you know, written um, and transferable information, or at least easily transferable information. And then and importantly, would have been in Europe, uh, combining or synthesizing all these ideas, and then also developing the scientific method. Kind of think of the Age of Enlightenment for that time period. So that's how chemistry has its roots in alchemy and just the basics of where chemistry came from.